Yo, what's good, everybody? What's good? <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Yes, yes, we're back. Uh, let's see. Something went wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right, Howard. All right, wise guy. How are you just gonna start off? Oh God! What? What? <laughs> so this. So this is what we're doing, huh? This is what we're doing. We're just immediately, you know, coming to the chat and choosing violence. Is that? Is that what we're doing today? Is that really what we're doing today, guys? Come on. We don't. We don't really want to do this, right? That's the priority? Oh, okay, you know. You know, yeah, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
But yo, what is up, Howard? How are you doing, my guy? What's good? How are you doing today? Are you doing? I don't like Facebook, but I greatly enjoy the marketplace. Like, like Facebook marketplace? I don't know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever done anything on Facebook marketplace, actually. What do they have on there? What are, is it like Craigslist? I'm still waiting on the BDSP debate. That's what, don't worry, Howard, it's coming. I promise. I promise it's on its way. I'm telling you, dog. It'll be here soon. Oh, music is loud? Oh, okay, my beat. Let me... What about this? Is, is this better? Is this better? And yes, Adam, I'm trying to become a React Andy today. I'm trying to see... You know, if I can be good at this, maybe... Oh, okay, well... Oh! Okay, there we go. Okay, it should be... It should be, it should be good now. It should be good now. Okay, what about, what about this? Before, before it was on a, um... It, Cause I have a, I have multiple, um... I have multiple sound, uh... What are they called? Channels? And, uh... On one of the channels, I just have it for set to Chrome, but I can't have it just directly tied to Chrome only. It still ties into like the music that's on the uh, uh, that ties on like the uh, that's currently playing from like the music player. And I don't know how to stop that. I'm still working on that, but okay, okay, cool. All right, I'm glad that's fixed. Thank you for letting me know. It's people listening to their own pre-owned thing. I mean, I guess, I guess that's just. That's just Craigslist, right? Like, that's literally just Craigslist. <laughs> but you know, could be a little different, who knows? But yes, welcome, welcome Jonah, welcome Adam. How are you guys doing today? You guys do anything fun? You guys have anything crazy in store this week? Hey, let your boy know. Yo, this is the, this is the how was your day segment. So tell me, how was your day? Oh, also I'll turn up the music. So let me know if you could, if it's still too low or anything like that. Dang. So it looks like the homies, the homies ain't got nothing, huh? Nobody, nobody's doing anything crazy or exciting. Nobody's going out and running in the streets and having snowball. Oh, wait, did it snow where any, hey, any, anybody out there, did it snow where you guys are? It snowed where I am. And that's how I was off work on Monday, which is kind of sick, to be honest. Uh, did it snow for any for any of you guys? Dang, no snow in Boston. Dang. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of good for you guys, right? Because snow is just more annoying in Boston or New England, or I'm not re really just Boston. It's really just more annoying than anything else. We've had flurries, but nothing is stuck. Yeah, you know, we, we got a good bit of snow today. It was like, I don't know, a few inches. You know, nothing crazy. Got enough to get work shut down. So that was pretty cool. When I was a kid, I used to love seeing flurries because that meant that there was a chance of snow. Just like a, just like a little chance that snow was going to happen. If it was a bit colder this winter, we'd be... <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Well, you know, maybe. Oh no, no. I, you know, you're 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 actually right. You know what? Nah. You you got you guys are pretty lucky right now, honestly. If it was any worse, it would be it would be a pretty bad time to be honest. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah. So today I want to do something a bit different, guys. Uh, you know, usually I'm like playing the game or you know doing a tier list or something, but I haven't tried react content i don't think or at least i don't remember if that's the case and i was i started watching this video uh this week and i was like you know this video, this video is kind of kind of interesting it's like <laughs> it, it's kind of long but i don't know it might be it might be pretty fun so i thought i'd 
I thought I'd give it a try. And, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll have a good time. Maybe we'll learn a lot about the Rhythm community and one of its legends. I am Chris for life. No bias, because the name is Chris, though, of course. Um, so, yeah, I thought this would be, uh, I thought this would be pretty good. And if you guys hate it, uh, I will definitely know, because I'll look at that view count and I'll see zero, and I'll be like, wow, they hated it. <laughs> so, we'll, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Adam. Adam, please. Adam, stop. No, Jonah, that's not good. We don't say 50% exclamation mark, exclamation mark. We say 50% sad face, but there's no way you guys will reach it. You don't have the manpower. <laughs> I, I like how I like how I can contribute. Oh, never mind. It says only your viewers can contribute. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sydney really came in just to donate. Actually, yeah, yeah, Howard, that's the... I'm mean, sorry, Howard, uh, not Howard. Yeah, Jonah, that's the face. Yeah, exactly. 50% sad face. No, not 50% Velocipog. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> CP9 Coconut. That's a long tag, but, you know, I just don't think I'm I'm there. Oh, you're playing Final Fantasy VII. Wait, the remake or the, the old version? Are you playing Final Fantasy Remake, Sydney? Also, what's up? How are you doing? <laughs> Hmm. Depending on which one you're playing is. I mean, it doesn't really depend on anything. I just want to know which one because it's, it's kind of interesting. Because uh, I have definitely only played the remake and I love the remake. And I am very excited for the next installment. Uh, I will gladly pay $60 for each part of the story. So I will gladly pay 240 stories. <laughs> $240 to finish the story. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sydney. Yes. Yes. All right. You're doing good. That's good. You like the remake? Man, it's hard to please Howard. So the fact that you said you like the remake, the game's doing all right then. All right. I only played a little bit of the original. I've never played the original. Uh, so I have no reference, which is, I guess, the best for me as somebody who's never played it. Maybe it makes it worse. I don't know. But I had a good time still. Uh, it's it's coming out in 2028 or like the next installment. Well, you know. We just have to hope that it's coming out next year, you know. I like to keep my hopes high, not low, you know. <laughs> Pacing is kind of whack, but it's fine. It's good. I liked it. I'm playing the new game plus, so I'm grossly overpowered. <laughs> don't get on them wear rats. Oh, yes. I, 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 you know, quick aside, I love being overpowered in video games that's one of my favorite things ever like when i was a kid i definitely put in cheat codes all the time and beat games multiple times because i love being overpowered that was that was just my thing all right i was the kind of kid that would be like ah, oh, this little guy can't can't really you know come in and fight me because i'm too strong so <laughs> i thought that was i always thought that was fun i love being overpowered Probably 70 USD. Absolutely 70 USD on the PS5, I think, right? I think. I can't remember. The original Final Fantasy VII is so good. Aged okay, all things considered. Uh, a lot of people say it aged great. I haven't played it. I mean, it, look, it looks good. It still looks good to this day. You know, I don't, I don't have any qualms. It's not like I'm thinking of GoldenEye. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I love the RE games, because they overpower you so quickly after you beat them. And so I remember my uncle playing New Game Plus when I was younger. I think he had like the rocket launcher or something like that. And he was just so broke. The zombies literally couldn't handle it. Oh, it was so good to watch. I, I loved it. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. <laughs> oh, you know, I never went back to play RE7 on the overpowered one, but to be honest, I don't know if I was ever overpowered in RE7. I still felt weak, no matter what I had, honestly. So, you know, that's one thing. But today, 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 guys, we will be reacting to some content. Uh, you know what? Let me go ahead and swap over to it now. Whoop, 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 whoop. We're gonna go down. We're gonna go down here. Web browser. Whoop. Uh, so the name of the video, Rhythm Game Anomalies, and it's starring I Am Chris for Life. Um, I've never really been into rhythm 
games like that, like like super hard into them. Like I like them, but I've never been like like into them, into them, you know? I was just like, oh yeah, rhythm games are cool. And I started watching this. I got like seven minutes into it in the beginning. I was like, huh. You know, maybe there's more of this rhythm game stuff you know, or just like, you know, how people like really get into it. And I was like, I think this would be interesting. You know, it's game related and what it goes. I think it starts out with them doing DDR. I think it goes into them doing Guitar Hero. So yeah, yeah, I think this will be, I think this will be pretty good. So get your popcorn, everybody, uh, and sit down. Cause we're going on for a long ride. As you can see this, uh, <laughs> one hour and 45 minute ride i don't know if we're gonna watch the whole thing necessarily we might we might watch the whole thing if i get really into it we're definitely watching it um i'll definitely try and react to it i feel like i don't want to get stuck and just not react to it and just just watch it just like oh yeah 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 so you know we'll, we'll, we'll try and do some reacting so yeah here we go here is my <laughs> wait rock band and beatles rock band 2 uh, oh, okay. That, that's what you play. Oh, you play. Oh, I've never played Osu. I tried to play Osu once at a place, but it just didn't work, so I couldn't play it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I love Rock Band. Rock Band is probably my favorite rhythm game, at least that I know of. Two thousands rhythm games were okay. all the rage. Okay. Also, let me know if you guys can hear it. Is it good? Is it? See a dance dance revolution machine. And if your arcade was really bumping, is this good or do I need to turn it up more? For when there were so many people waiting to play. You would put your quarter up on the machine, waited your opportunity to Hello. insert your credit, and got your three songs in. Then not long after that, Guitar Hero would begin to make what about now? throughout the rhythm game landscape as well, and overtook the spotlight for years with its infectious song list, combined with its unique concept as a game that was executed perfectly. Both of these yeah, games yeah. have one thing in common though, Okay, cool. wasn't the fact that they were some of the most revolutionary rhythm games that laid out the groundwork for future ones. They each shared a Yo. pivotal player within their games. Look at look at look what a time that this is doesn't it just like feel you guys with like some like bit of nostalgia like doesn't it just doesn't it just feel like a time there there, there are captions the biggest inspirations in the genre's history uh i i can i can get captions there we go they're auto generated though so do with that what you will but yes i i got captions Great. This player redefined and is still redefining what it means to truly push the skill barrier in rhythm games and has quite possibly the most impressive resume in that genre today. Wait, were they doing the stuff like this back in like to be a perfectionist and a completionist? Year this was. And his story is nothing short of awe-inspiring. This has got to be Let's like dive into the storyline of one of the early most 20, crucial 10, rhythm game figureheads in the world. I am Chris for life. What <laughs> what a what, was I born I yet? Noticed that I was getting Honestly, you might not have fast, maybe right? that I was like Oh my god, like, I feel like I'm actually really good and I can actually go somewhere with it. Okay. Look at this title. This just screams early YouTube, doesn't it? <laughs> Yo, what's good, NGP? How are you doing, man? <laughs> I am Chris for Life, aka Chris Chike, had started his Yo, rhythm 2007. Game 2005. Oh, 2005. He was introduced to Dance Dance okay. Revolution by one of his neighbors at the age of 13. So you After were born. A copy of one of the games himself. Chris became instantly hooked, and he would also be showing up at arcades to get some more practice in a couple months. Today's down the line. rough. Oh man, this would spur a series of. I'm really sorry to hear that. Scores and with a max 300. Yo, wait, wait, wait. Actually, actually, hold on a sec. I, I, I want to go back real quick. I want to go back. I want to go back. Is it like 10 seconds? This game right here, Dance Dance Revolution Extreme. I never had this game, but one of my friends had it, and honestly, it was pretty neat. <laughs> it was pretty neat. And don't worry, NGP. Yo, if today's been rough, hopefully, hopefully today, you know, chill out with the stream and we'll watch about Chris for life and we'll learn about some DDR. He was one of the first YouTubers I watched. Wait, who? Wait, this guy? Wait, who, who is this guy? Oh, Eteen. That's his name. He seems cool. Age, I, I I never had it, and I played it, I think, literally one time, and it was cool. Chris became instantly hooked, and he would also be showing up at arcades Age to get some more practice a in a couple months down the line. Ah, uh, yeah. This would spur a Look series at that. of his first documented scores, <laughs> and with the Max 300 double A under his belt already, there was a great amount of talent he was showing from the get-go. Looking for an outlet to share his joy with the game with others, he would sign up on websites like DDR Freak and Aaron in Japan. Oh, but okay. But primarily use the latter to share his accomplishments. No. 
no, he since did not. YouTube was in its very primitive stages, file hosting services were simply more popular to use, or players would simply post screenshots of their scores as means of verification. <laughs> Most players around this time were playing on arcade machines, but Chris simply didn't have consistent enough access to a machine to where he could get a substantial amount of scores. The differences you know, between most console have you guys, versions and the arcade have you guys ever seen timing windows are somebody so trivial. Like, so use a DDR Chris's machine had more than like enough IRL regardless. His first ever videos would be him getting two grades on Sakura with the stealth mod and a triple A on Cartoon Heroes with the same mod. The latter video still existing today. Wait, invisible notes, bro? How are you playing this game with invisible notes? Do you just you just memorize it and you just go? Okay. All right. At this time, Chris had been playing for only five months and was already. Yo, my man, my man's using the home pad. The material this game had to offer. That looks like a good right quality this one time, too. DDR's new competition to the scene in the groove had made its way towards the dance game community too, and Chris began setting near quad stars. Yo, what's good, Abby? How's it going? On July 9th, 2005. Welcome to React Day. Day. Had one more judgment window than usual. Chris Video on the top to right corner, top left over corner. To DDR to see if he can manage the marvelous window over there, made possible via the training mode feature. In ITG, oh, okay, the so it's like judgment is around better than perfect. 23 milliseconds, whereas in DDR, it becomes around 17. Chris had posted two marvelous attack videos on August 2nd, 2005, Dubai. where he would get a 30 perfect AAA on Max 300 <laughs> and a 45 perfect AAA on Max Unlimited. Okay, so this. Okay, so this 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 actually looks really really uh fast. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah. Uh... I mean, that, I mean, that, that's cool. Chris's Just reacting, you know, after you made millions of, of dollars, you're good. Edited versions of files would grab the attention of him as well. <laughs> Despite these being much more difficult than the original charts, Chris had Triple I love that. Cartoon Heroes edit that Yo, what's good, Exodus Main? How's it going? No jumps. Yo, welcome to the chat. Edit that had I some first saw Chris, and he guilts me runs. into watching While the stream. Wait, what? Decent bit, <laughs> half jokingly or not, regarding the lack of arcade-oriented scores, Chris would post his first Triple A out in arcade. No, I did it. In the mood for dancing to show that he was trying. Trying to make an effort in that department. Wait, what? His more also, efforts would still transfire. Okay, who who is Exodus Main? And with a pair who are of you? Survivor Max Oni AAA, <laughs> he had now made the hardest song in DDR Extreme look fairly trivial. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Diego! Yeah, I did kill someone to watch my stream. That's true. <laughs> What's up, Diego? <laughs> oh yes. Yo, my man's going brazy. Look at that. That said 613 combo. My man is a god. Looking for more difficult content, Chris had now begun tackling some of the hardest popular DDR edits that were around. One of these would be Bimani Rollers or BMR's A edit, which is revered as one of the most infamous DDR edits to this day. At Dude. 191 BPM during its second half, the 16th notes are blistering look, look at, at this, speed, look at, look at and when you throw in crossovers, notes. technical rhythms, and exhaustingly long streams all into one mix, you are with a chart this that is wild. the most veteran players to their physical hey, limits. Bro, what? <laughs> Ow. I honestly don't even understand how you can move your feet this fast in general. Like he's he's not he's not hitting all of them, but the fact that he completed the song is more than enough to be surprised by, honestly. On the other hand, he would destroy BMR's V edit. Look at my man's feet. That solidly along with the triple A on Kua Renero's <laughs> edit of I Feel. Both charts which have these extremely long 16th notes. My sections, guy is crazy. With share jumps as well, and harder than almost everything Extreme had to offer. While Chris had solidified himself at this point to be a very respectable DDR player, he decided to start juggling in some more in the groove to try and perfect parts of that game as well. Scoring pretty high on some of the more aggressive material in the game, Chris would eventually 99 or TriStar, the only 13 footer pandemonium, on December 2nd, 2005, and would upload a video of him 99ing it once more a couple months later. Wombo combo! I wonder. You know, just, just real quick, I wonder if when you're doing like DDR like this, I wonder if there's like specific shoes that people say you should wear in the community. Like, are people in the community like, hey, bro, 
if you're really trying to get in this DDR, you know, you, you got to wear the black Air Force Ones. Uh, the rubber soles are perfect. Uh, the flat surface is, you know, really good for DDR pads. Like, does... <laughs> I would assume he's in a house based on the door, but if he does have downstairs neighbors, God, they hate him. But, like, I imagine, like, do do are there shoes that you should have? <laughs> like, <laughs> are they just like, yeah, man, make make sure you have on the the Tims, uh, or make sure you have on the uh the like the the Rose ones or something like that. Like, yeah, that's the the optimal shoe. <laughs> I assume it's something that has a lot of grip, though. That's what that's the one thing I would assume. What are they gonna do? Steal the dance mat? No, they're just gonna hate them and then they're gonna call the cops on them because it's loud and they're downstairs. As long as they look cool, it doesn't matter. Okay. Hey, I, I, hey, I kind of agree, honestly. I agree. Why is he thumbs to downing though? Out Chris's does he understand that he doesn't have to do that? Scores, the prodigy would catch his first wind of notable internet fame. No shot. In February of 2006. No shot. Bare feet is optimal. Page of Ebombs World, a popular video sharing website, and it would be e his DMRA pass we mentioned earlier. While the comments are what you would expect from a mid-2000s viral internet video, <laughs> most people were absolutely floored anything like this was even remotely possible. Chris would go on to set some more solid scores on charts from DDR <laughs> Supernova, and displayed a lot more interest on the arcade side of things to make the scores more official. Oh, grippy socks, By maybe. Maybe grippy the, socks. He became glued to the screen on another game more than DDR. And this is the game that would truly put him in the spotlight as one of the most oh. influential players of all time. So DDR was Guitar Hero. No way. And oh, actually true. Actually true. Ooh, a new hero. Okay, I, I like that title. That, that title is pretty On funny. On November 7, Everyone's 2006, the very, so maybe a good Guitar form Hero shoe. 2 would be released. So and it was by far a much precise. more nuanced and fleshed out version of what Harmonix really wanted to capture with the series. You know, the song list had much more catchy and trendy. Maybe, tunes, maybe tap shoes with grip and faster content into the game. Hammer ons and pull offs worked much more consistently. And the game Yo. overall just had a fresher coat of paint that made it a much more pleasurable experience. Chris <laughs> had never played Guitar Hero 1 before, so this would be his first introduction to the series. And it was stacked time to see cards if his DDR for DDR shoes over in any capacity. Yes. On January 18th, 2007, Chris had uploaded a video of himself five starring and passing the hardest song in the entire game, Jordan, where he uses the traditional star power route of activating as late as possible into the solo and hoping for the best once it runs out. Just a week later, though, oh, he God. much more promising potential with his top five score on Miserloo, a chart known for its heavy amounts of strumming and tricky fretting transitions. Bro, how do you do this? That I don't understand. Day, he took his very first first place on the same song and within just four days was able to take his first song off the NFC list. The community what? was quite stunned by Chris's progress, to say the least, and given he didn't even know how to use hammer runs and pull-offs until after his Miserloo FC, this- Hold, hold on a second. I, I don't know if you guys understand. Like, I, I don't know rhythm games, but I understand what they just said right now. He said, they said he literally went from like, just like, you know, just being pretty good to literally like getting like the highest score and like FCing songs like so quickly. Like, bro, what? You can't, this guy's crazy. <laughs> oh my God, this dude's, this dude's and playing improperly. Dog, this guy is literally crazy. <laughs> the black air for, uh, we need something like stack cards for you. Yes, I agree. Actually, you'd be pressing all four directions in air force ones. <laughs> nah, you should only be pressing two, two directions at max. These are the early days of YouTube. They were a trip. Oh, look at this camera sitting on the side. My man's looking at the TV, so they also get his arm, so they show he's not cheating. Goaded. Hemorrhoids? Well, <laughs> maybe they got that one a little wrong, you know? <laughs> this would unleash Chris's true potential in the game very shortly. On February 11th... Wait, he's playing one-handed? A free bird Wait, what? <laughs> video would be uploaded. And with his misses being in Solo J only, Chris was on the brink of taking another Tier 8 song already. Before most people could get a single word in, he had nailed the FC just hours later, to take down Guitar Hero 2's most iconic song. Bro. First ever FC. Bro, no no pop off or nothing, just Hey man, I I did it. This would Thumbs be the up. last first ever FC Chris would get in this game, but this didn't mean he wouldn't try to go back a game in the series to try out Guitar Hero 1 for a change. 
After all, his first impression was that he needed to strum every note in Guitar Hero 2, so to transition into its first game wouldn't be that okay. abrupt of a transition. Having a healthy amount so, of first place scores. Oh, so he started off in the, uh, in the second one. I guess Chris I must have missed that. the fourth person to break the 13 million overall score barrier on March 29th, 2007. With the end of the year coming up, this meant that a new Guitar Hero would most likely be on the rise. And on October 28th, 2007, what? that's exactly what would happen. Yo, my, yo, my man's is actually crazy. I also often just, just thumbs up and that's it. I love watching Guitar old footage Hero on YouTube. Legends of Rock. This was the I game love that it truly so much. went all out on all fronts. The sleek highway, fantastic track list, chock full of classic rock and metal bangers, slightly oh. looser and accessible timing windows, and the boss battles to top it all off. This was the upgrade to Guitar Hero Man. that no one was expecting. Kind of sad I never really got into Guitar the Hero. Today. The number one song that caught everyone off guard, however, was the song you would get to play once you had beaten the entire career mode. Oh. And if you were playing on Expert, this song was the biggest rude awakening you might have had playing Guitar uh, Hero ever, or really just in video games in general. Wait, 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 wait I, feel, I feel like I know the song. I know, Adam, I don't remember you telling me about Guitar I remember you said you were like a god back in the day. Oh, Through the Fire and Flames, yep. The chart for Through the Fire and Flames, charted by Chris Vance, was as hectic as it could possibly start out, especially Bro. for the majority of players who weren't introduced to the concept of tapping, where you would utilize your strumming you hand to hit other notes that would be too fast to hit with just one hand. What players wouldn't recognize at first was what? that the intro was just a mere stepping stone to introduce you into what you can expect for the next the intro of a chart brings <laughs> okay. you. Okay, To right. start off, bridge one is easily the first section that will floor every player, whether it's the grace notes at the very start or the blistering fast blue orange nope, chart I can't transitions. Do it. Not Adam, could you do for this through the fire and right flames? That most players will spend hours. Could you do this song? The hit, and even then, you'll most likely have to come up with something else. Solo fill two is the next notably hard section that introduces loads of different timings between the notes as they descend and ascend back up, <laughs> blending together trills and zigs to create this super awkward buildup. Similar principle pattern wise can be applied to 2400 the note up, streak. Where it does these ascending chords followed by a green, yellow, orange zig pattern, then back down the chord rope and some ascending quads to begin the first solo, which is called Herman Solo. Herman Solo has quite a few difficult spots, namely okay. these reverse orange All shirt. right, all right, hold, 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 hold on a second, hold on a second. There is, there is a lot, <laughs> there is a lot going on. There's a lot of notes and there's a lot of different terminologies. Adam, my expert, the man who said, you think tapping was the very first video game tech you've learned. Uh, please tell me about some of the things that this man is mentioning. Uh, what are these staircases and how, how easy or how hard are they to do? Because I was never good at them, but I never tried to master the game like that. So, you know what? Yeah, just, 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 just give me a quick rundown. How, how hard is it to actually learn how to do the, the fast, hard, like uppity downs and ziggity zags and things like that? Cause, uh, yeah, it was definitely, uh, <laughs> hard for me. It's something like rock band and some various shredding to keep your hands working on all fronts. What the takes its name quite literally and is much harder than just about everything besides maybe bridge one. The descending quad trill combo into some more descending trips with some intricately timed strums makes a lot of this song frankly seem pretty trivial in comparison. Twin Solo also has lots of aggressive trips, both ascending and descending with some more tricky strums at time too. So Far Away 3 introduces the infamous Red Snake where it's a 26.6 notes per second zig that covers all frets, but what? mainly stays focused on the red note. Lastly, to top it all off, the outro has tons of grace notes you have to time perfectly, and then a long repetitive tapping sequence to finish it all off. So, with that out of the way, oh God. how did Chris manage this thing? And as Adam said, staircase were really tapping was super hard to get through. What uh, Super hard to get through. What's the... I guess what's the hardest thing or I guess technique or I don't know, something like that to learn in Guitar Hero. Like what was what was the hardest part about learning in Guitar Hero? All right, let's Just see. a couple days after the game's release, Chris had gotten 747,000 points on Through the Fire and Flames and shortly followed that up with a 750k score nabbing the 750k xbox achievement immediately 
a few weeks okay. later, he had increased his score to over 800k and was pulling away from just about everyone else already. Hell Ashes would briefly <laughs> rival Chris's scores, but this would show to be an extremely short-lived rivalry. After a couple weeks, Chris had made a few more increases to his scores, and it was then that the Score Hero community would request the video to watch it unfold in real time, and would result in one of the most shocking videos. Ninety-five percent. It's really, it's really about time you make a video. All right. Well, let's see. I can only play a few seconds of raw audio because copyright big dumb. Yo, actually facts. My man is a god, what? <laughs> On December 9th, 2007, hero. Chris had uploaded an 818k score. Is score heal the, flames, documenting the, the name of the video? Wait, what video is that? Well. Community members across the board could not believe what they were seeing, as there really wasn't anything quite like this chart at all, and to see someone this proficient for nearly 8 minutes was truly <laughs> a sight to behold. Nevertheless, this run did have quite a few mistakes scattered throughout the difficult sections I mentioned earlier, as Chris just lazily oh. scrubbed through them, but given how long the game had been out, this was scarily fast progress still, and it was obviously had a stronghold on this chart. About a week later, another video would be delivered, Except this time, it would be a personal best with 853k on December 14th, 2007. Chill out, my guy. I I just I just don't understand how you hit the notes like that. Think like Smash Boards? Okay, so it was like yeah. Okay, so it was like this Smash run Boards. Was okay. Just about the same with some minor note streak and star power improvements. But now Chris is using Hyperspeed 5, most likely to aid in him deciphering some of the more difficult patterns better. While Wait. his next score improvement would take a bit longer than usual, a he return to the song would be Hyperspeed 5? February 26, 2008, obtaining 885k points. This was primarily just another run that included more consistent note streaks in the second half of the song, Bro. but also had a bit more aggression to it with his ability to hit the reverse trills during Herman solo. What? Dude is literally cracked. My guy is literally cracked. Uh, it was uh, hyperspeed actually makes the game easier. It was fun to shop because it made the game look way harder. But it made it. A but couple in reality, days after it, wait, Chris's new record on the song, he began to share his accomplishments. Did it slow it down or something? Wait, what? What is? World, what is hyperspeed? His talents into the real world now. First would be at his middle school speech class where he talked about how to play the game and then proceeded to pull off an 820k run on a setup that was much less than favorable. He would then proceed to break the 900k barrier for the first time Look ever. Look how cool that 6, is. People were doing this in like 2008. To official world record in New York for the new gamers edition of the Guinness World Record book series. Needless to say, what? all the momentum and eyes were on Chris's side and there still wasn't anyone looking to rival him anytime soon. Chris would finish off March with some more minor score improvements, except these would be in the form of screenshots only, so it made it difficult to deduce what sections he struggled on and which ones he was improving at. What avid followers of Chris's accomplishments thread weren't expecting, however, was a seemingly oh out of nowhere Jordan 100% Overstrom, one of the hardest songs in Guitar Hero 2, and the last footage of him playing this was when he barely passed it. The very next day, <laughs> he just FCs it, re FCs it, re re FCs it, and then F sees it one more time to take the number one score on it, all in the matter of four days. Then to ride off that hype, Chris returned to Through the Fire and Flames, and this is where he would go on the steamroll of a lifetime. Yo, what? He said he... <laughs> oh my god, this dude is crazy. It sped, up the, it sped up the note speed, but made the space between them way bigger. Oh, okay. That does make it easier, I guess. Wait, why does my man have the drum set? Chris had worked his way down to a minus 10 and a 975k run. He FC'd the entire solo and hit the red snake, but would sadly catch some misses in bridge one and the grace notes before the outro trills. The man himself oh. was now a firm believer that he could be the one to bring it all home. While not a new improvement score-wise, 
A 2700 plus note streak would make its way onto the stream, as Chris would choke in Sam solo, followed by various misses to prevent him from getting a personal best note count wise too. What came out of thin air yet again was his spontaneous return what? to Jordan, where he would take the new first place score of 501,550 points, and to this day is the number one score on Xbox 360. Really? The number one score on Xbox 360? I don't know why that surprises me so much, actually. I it's, it's been out for so long. Well, I mean, I guess everybody's on PC now, right? Probably. By May, Chris had taken his first substantial break from the song and used Guitar Hero 2 to serve as a palate cleanser, <laughs> first place after first place, and eventually landing himself as the number one overall GH2 player and number six as of 2021. With GH2 taken care of to a degree no one had ever done this before, dude's crazy. Chris sought out vengeance on Through the Fire and Flames for what would hopefully be his last hoorah for the illustrious full combo. On May 29th, 2008, the song's days were slowly dwindling, as a new note streak record had been broken, obtaining the first 3,000 plus note streak of 3,088, missing in the transition from the trips into the oh, Pesci Storms during Twin Solo. Just a few I more days later, a minus on, three would be done on his live stream, and on Chris's hard. only misses would surprisingly be in Herman solo during the first set of reverse orange trails. Six was the biggest car tire here too, so it's even more impressive. He's so good. <laughs> oh, really, Cindy? You didn't go past medium? I could go to hard, usually. Orange shows were too complex for me to figure out how to move properly. That's fair. Also, the spacing on the guitar on the guitar hero. A controller was like a little too far spaced apart going from a just minus a little 10 bit. directly to a minus three shuttered the community and the skeptics who were dead set on their beliefs were well on their way to being proven utterly wrong in front of their very eyes he's literally this would so also close be the time where the thread put their foot down and asked chris to specifically not live stream his attempts anymore but rather provide a properly recorded video from a camera with good quality like he had done in the past, as an FC of this caliber in their eyes should be treated with the right respect. <laughs> Chris would end up adhering to this advice as no further live streams would be initiated and the community was simply left to wait. A day what? had gone by and no word yet, just nothing but sheer excitement and impatience from everyone to see if Chris had done it, whether they were refreshing his score here. Hold on a second, let, 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 let's, go, let's go ahead and talk about this for a second. So a whole community of people said, no, no, we don't want to see it live. We just want to make sure that you record it and then you can upload it in 480p maximum. All right. With the respect it deserves. Okay. And then we will watch. We can wait. Okay. Imagine a community of people that says they can wait for something and do not want immediate gratification. Like what? What a time 2008 was. Like, early 2000s was definitely a different time. It, yeah, it literally couldn't be us. Okay, BDSP is coming up soon. That's all you'll get. <laughs> Live streaming was a mess. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was also that. Live streaming was pretty bad back in the day. Uh, most people probably couldn't even watch it. Most people probably couldn't even stream it. <laughs> so, eh, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad back in the day. It probably was not great quality. It was like, oh, no, no, no. It was not good. But yeah, that's actually, man, this is like a time capsule to just like a glimpse in like early 2000s. Oh, man, I love it. Hero Thread, his YouTube channel, the Xbox leaderboards, hell, even his photo bucket account. The community was glued to their screens and they would not rest until the deed was done. They Another wouldn't day, rest? Goodbye, nothing. Just the same shtick as last time, but then a user by the name of Football Tom three eight six five made a post that had the thread more rampant than ever. Football Tom had noted that on the Xbox Live leaderboards, Chris posted a score of nine hundred eighty seven k, a score that could only be obtained under two conditions: either that he missed during the very last couple notes, or he simply got the FC. With the thread bombarded and hundreds Whoa. of people watching, refreshing the page to see if it had been done, <laughs> Football Tom had posted a photo bucket link that would solidify one of the most impressive and important moments in rhythm game history. Oh my god, what? People just refreshing? On June 4th, 2008, I Am Chris for Life had FC'd through the fire and flames. Oh my god. And simple. 
987k points, 3,722 notes, what was thought to be outright impossible by the community on a multitude of levels at one point had now been completely decimated by someone this who put in month after month to climb his way to the top of a mountain that no one was within reach at any point in time. Not to mention his rise to Guitar Hero 2 stardom with over 50 plus first places and a first place on Jordan. Chris Chyke was the undisputed king of Guitar Hero. Oh, absolutely. A few hours after the screenshot was revealed, Chris had posted the video oh of the FC onto God. his channel, and it would go on to become one of the most revered and viewed accomplishments Rhythm Games have ever seen. Wouldn't it be so this funny if, like, necessarily the very a few years later, they just said, oh, yeah, it was all game, fake. But it would most <laughs> certainly be the apex. So now it's time to enter an era in Chris's life where he didn't know where exactly to go from here. But wherever it was it was still going to end up producing some of the best rhythm game scores out there. Yeah, how does he... Yeah, how does he... How does he go on? Wait, really? Wow. Well, oh, the pop-off? The goaded pop-off what we've been waiting for? No way. Yes! No fucking way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, yeah, that sounds like early 2000s oh to me. God. That's so sad, Adam. But I don't even know why I'm like Holy surprised, shit. I guess. Holy shit. That just fucking. Because uh, that happens, that's happening to a lot of speedrunners. Like throughout the years, yeah, it's happened to a lot of them. And it's very, very sad. After Chris FC'd through the fire and flames, he found himself juggling a myriad of games. Whether it was finally time to relax and play different rhythm games for fun, or to seek out another game to be competitively focused on. Yeah, what does he do on now? On June 19th, 2008, Chris had made a proper return to dance games for the first yeah! time in the year, with a couple scores set on DDR Supernova, which were four grades on The Legend of Max, and a 23 grade FC on Max Unlimited. My man's this a go! This would be the time he would take virtually the same game onto the keyboard side of things. As Step Mania, a DDR simulator for keyboard play, would grab his attention. I, can't, I could never get this game enough, to work! He would play through the Fire and Flames on it for his first video. Revisiting okay. his DDR Extreme cabinet at his local okay. arcade, Chris would finish off another <laughs> big chunk of the Extreme series with some scores on August 14th, All right, this guy, this guy's pretty His funny. return to DDR didn't stop him from playing Guitar Hero 3, though, as he had managed to FC the entire Dragon Force DLC pack, FCing Operation Ground and Pound, Revolution Death Squad, and Heroes of Our Time now becoming the first person to have FC'd every Dragon Force song. To shift into a brand new game for once, Chris decided to give Rock a proper crazy. swing and opted to commit a bit of time to the drum side of things in particular. In 2007, he had managed to almost FC expert songs just within days of trying the instrument out, but in 2008, he would look much more confident in his play, getting 99s on songs like Panic Attack and Constant Motion two charts that require a great deal of technical proficiency and are pretty lengthy on top of that. Yes, as far as rock to even band. Out DJ Hero for a bit, and while the video quality looks like it's from a different century, <laughs> it was still fascinating to see Chris juggle so many games at once at a respectable level so easily. The end of 2009 would mark not only a subtle return to In the Groove, but also oh the birth God. of Chris's second Operation Ground Pound was such a fun song. I've never In this heard channel, of that song, Chris actually. would upload step charts he had created, so many that he was most likely working on a potential pack to release for the community. Oh! After another long break from Rhythm Games, Chris would return to so DDR Extreme to potentially AAA the entire game, as with just a few songs left and already AAAing them at home, <laughs> this seemed more than probable. <laughs> and on August 13th, 2010, he had now AAA'd all of DDR Extreme AC. All right, so so let, let, let's 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 go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get get the list out. So he was playing Dance Dance Revolution, DJ Hero, Step Mania, Guitar Hero, Rock Band on drums. Like he he was just playing all of that and also making his own DDR tracks. Dog, this guy is a fiend, bro. He just needs to just make a rhythm game himself. My God, he probably yo. What if? What if he was one of the devs on Friday Night Funkin'? Like, imagine every everything was he was like, you know, I had nothing else to do, so I just I just made my own. And that's how I made Friday Night Funkin'. <laughs> It'll be really funny if it was like a surprise. Like he was like, Yeah, man, Chris, Chris I am Chris for life. Really the lifeblood of the of this project, honestly. I don't know. I think that I think that would be kind of kind of funny. Like, you know, that's just like his uh that's just like his his magnum opus. He's still going? Oh my god. 
Bro, he's been... That means he would have been doing this for... 2005... Like, 17 years! Wait. 2015. Yes. 15 years, 2020, and 22. Yeah, 15 years! Right, this is my Bro, he's time crazy! This today. I'd like to give a shout-out to... <clears throat> Go, Matt, because you're cool. <laughs> Adrian. Because you're a good-looking man. No homo. And... <laughs> Ah, uh, early 2000s. Because you were my inspiration from the beginning. And I never have to play this game ever again. But I will, because I love playing this game. <laughs> this Yo, my man's literally a god! To accomplish. And when someone even asked him what was next in store for him, he didn't seem to have an adequate answer. Becoming the king of Guitar Hero alongside AAA's favorite DDR game, this really left him with one solid option left, and would end up being the glow up no one was expecting at the time. And it would also be his most aggressive rhythm game era yet. It was time what? to fully commit to DDR's sibling and community driven game, In the Groove. I've never heard of In the Groove, actually. Like, Aside he said that, but I've never heard Hero of it. Video or two, Chris had just about abandoned his old channel and became increasingly <laughs> more consistent on his second channel, mainly due to the drastic shift in content and the lack of connection with his fan base because of said different content. This was also a channel that allowed Chris to comfortably post whatever he wanted. While the rhythm game genre had been slowly entering a recession, he was finding more enjoyment with ITG than he had ever oh, before. He was among Imagine the, going players, to the mall, but not quite the number one superstar he was oh, revered wait, to be a guitar hero, especially with dance game legends like Flash, Dark Zuza, Mega Man X, Little Matt, Aorio, Mad Matt, Zetarux, Rinker, and plenty more that had a wide range of skill sets that were a complete 180 from not only Guitar Hero, but even DDR to a fair extent as well due to the community-driven style charts ITG offered. What All right, guys. The year is 2009. You just walked into a mall. You go to the game place. You see a DDR dance pad. You get on it. Somebody stands next to you. Who is it? I don't know, a tall looking kid. I don't know, he seems like he's pretty good. Sweating, breathing heavily already. And he says, net, he says, hey man, you want to play? And you say very enthusiastically, yeah man, yeah, I love this game. This game is so much fun. He smirks, says, yeah man, this game sure is fun. You want to bet? And he's like, oh yeah, I, I bet you a dollar I can win. He says, sure kid. And then he instantly smashes you with a thousand and seventy nine record <laughs> no i recognize you no no you, you don't recognize this guy all right this guy th this guy's different look at this score i think it's actually this guy but it's whatever D doesn't matter like <laughs> oh my god this is this is a mood. One of Chris's first impressive scores in ITG would be his quad star on Ants, a technical chart based highly around musical knowledge due to its immense amount of stops and goes, combined with some tricky bursts sprinkled throughout. That is literally what this is. Yo, it's it's so good. Yo, I'm about to get into rhythm games. I'm about to, I'm going to play Step Mania on stream. Oh, this is in somebody's house. This is literally just in somebody's house. And one of Chris's first noteworthy arcade scores. A random return to his home setup would make its way back as a one excellent run on Tell would almost become another second ever quad. A chart notorious for its galloping 16. Oh, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second, guys. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, don't, I don't think you guys actually noticed this. Wait, wait, wait. I'll, I'll point it out. I'll, I have to move my face, though. I have to move my face. Okay, well, that. That was not right. Uh, okay. Look at this. Look at this, guys. And with a jump. Oh. He's using the chair to hold down the dance pad. So he can hold on to the chair and hold down the dance pad so it doesn't move. This is actually, like, very creative in physics. And you can tell he's dedicated to the game with this amount of ingenuity. This guy is actually the GOAT. Yo, I yeah, I caught that. <laughs> oh my god, this guy is this guy is crazy. Uh, I try to get back into other games again, and I just do not have it anymore. It's because you don't have that burning passion in unlimited time as you did when you were a kid. <laughs>
if you if you just had a little bit of that spark, I know you could get it back. And yes, Jonah, this is what you would call a professional setup. Look at it. It's just in your living room on the giant CRT projector TV. Obviously, it has lag. Obviously. Like, come on. <laughs> now commonly categorized as tell jumps. There are tons of other you, you, you just gotta get a little bit of rhythm, line, Sydney, and then you can be the best here, at them, all right? There's just no feasible or way at least to cover decent. them all at once. What struck as an even bigger surprise despite not playing at the top level in this department were his first passes on One More Lovely, Heroes of Our Time, and Heartbreak Armageddon, all 200 BPM stream fests that have measures on measures of unfiltered stamina action. The only other footage that existed of Chris playing material even remotely like this was back in 2006 on BMR's A. You know, real quick, I wonder how his parents felt about this because, like, he's he's definitely playing this game like all day and all night. Like, there there's no shot he's not doing that. He absolutely is. But are his parents like, yeah, we're okay with this because we're able to stay in shape? Because if you look at him, th this this man he's he's been he's been like this like this size like this whole time because he's actively moving he's probably sweating so, or his parents just like no nah, you know this is actually a fine game because you're you know you're working out you know you're not just sitting on your butt you're not getting a blood clot but you are kind of just doing this so like you know like like what's our like what, what's what's the game plan here i i, I don't know i'd feel kind of torn because i'd be like you know you're not just as long as you're doing good in school you could be doing something worth to be on doing something worse to be honest <laughs> I think about that time uh, we played Rhythm Heaven and I messed up the entire time with the monkey clock because I kept hitting the half beat. <laughs> but don't worry, Sydney, because you eventually got through it. You got through it eventually, I think. You're good. <laughs> he is he is a rhythm god. Leave him alone. Hey, hey, it's not me. Hey, hey, you know what? I, if I could be him, I would have been him, but. I don't even know how he got this equipment, to be honest, in 2006, but that's okay. <laughs> so surely there had to be a reason he decided to get the gears up and running this fast. <laughs> no, no, Sydney, you, you did. Don't worry. To July you 17th, did. 2011, no, Chris no, no, Chike had it. entered his first national ITG <laughs> tournament, Fort Rapids 5. This tournament had one division there and was a three-day tournament. One day for the qualifiers, the other two days for the actual tournament and the last hour dedicated towards the final four round robin matches. Ooh! Not much footage exists of Chris during his earlier matches, and there doesn't seem to be a visible bracket available, but he had made his way into the final four, which consisted of Chris himself, Aorio, Little Matt, and Masterful. Oh, that's so Some cool! Of the scores that Chris were putting up in a tournament setting were quite impressive, particularly his low excellent counts on Dream to Nightmare, Ants, and Rainbow Tylenol. The biggest surprise, however, was bro, my man, match against a wait, hold on, bro. My man's literally winning by three points. Oh, yo, are, the, are these the margins in a tournament? This is the highest level. Oh my god, these guys are absolutely crazy. <laughs> Sydney said, Actually, I don't think I got past the tutorial, and Adam probably just played it instead. No, <laughs> keep it paused, read the notes. <laughs> 703 704 excellent he had one less excellent uh max combo 3351 max combo 2000 2072 no no i see some uh i see some other things down here though like the max combo i wonder if that takes into it but oh my god literally all of these things though it's literally one note and so i guess a fantastic is definitely better than having a better excellent honestly Oh my god. Oh my god. Sure. Yo, Aorio <laughs> opted for a 16 footer impulse, which had numerous 240 BPM 16th runs that were as long as eight measures. Chris oh, had he's never missing a lot. a 16 footer before and certainly didn't have much experience, if any, at 240 BPM. <laughs> but when the camera's on and the competition is there, he surprised just about everyone, including himself. Bro, did he get? I know he got in the zone. Bro, what? Can you even see the notes? I, I don't. My my brain my brain can't truly understand. I honestly can't even comprehend. Oh, he just barely lost. Nice 
Bro, he was literally... He literally barely lost. Oh my god! His score may seem trivial in isolation, especially since he didn't quite secure the point against Naorio, but contextually, this score was a massive wake up call to Chris's <laughs> true potential and adaptation skills in ITG, combined with placing second overall at Fort Rapids 5. The scores that preceded this Yo, at the very next actually week were facts, nothing Jonah. short of astounding as well. His scores on harder material like One More Lovely and Super- <laughs> Bro, like, 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 just like, like, look at this, like, if I'm looking at this, my eyes are updating at a 30, a 30 FPS, like refresh rate. Their eyes are going at like 120, 144. Like there's just, <laughs> there's just no shot. I'm, I would ever have the talent to read these notes this fast. How do you even practice this? Literally, how do you practice a rhythm game like this? Like, cause I don't think there's like a slow mode. How do you, how do you do it? How do you get good? You just play it for literally forever. And then you just get good one day? Is that how this works? That's a lot of money. Unless you can play it for free. Superluminal showed massive improvements on the stamina side, but his Dream 2 Nightmare quad stands out by far here, as it was the but first how do you get ever quad good? of its kind. The gimmicks and like, the rhythms in the song, combined with the insanely slow and fast BPMs, make this one of the hardest oh my God, I hate in the official slow ADG and catalog. fast. The ending is one of the most troll endings ever, especially since you have to abruptly stop in the middle of a 16th stream to what turns into fourth notes. Oh, oh, I, I hate that so much. I hate that so much that I. Yo, my man is a god! Jeez! You also the whole arcade for quarters and then practice forever. <laughs> you know what? You're a you're actually right. I think that's the only way to go. Bro, this dude is crazy. This dude is crazy. Chris's Yo, I am Chris for life. Fort Rapids 5, and his first first what? ever quad on an official ITG chart. Okay, this is actually just moving faster. In the accuracy scene. Is it not? Am I crazy? The problem with the ITG in particular is that most of the machines at this time were simply owned by avid players of the game at their homes rather than operating at public arcades. And the ones that are at arcades oh, are house fest. and are normally less than favorable guess... to play on. Chris Dance had made fest? a very sudden and brief return to Guitar Hero 3, as while he had FC'd through the Fire and Flames, this didn't mean he had a full setlist FC of the 69 other songs. One <laughs> stood out, and well, yeah, that's the name of the song. One. The big kicker in this chart is most infamously Fast Solo A, as it's littered with ascending triplets across all the frets, and even throws in a super precise strum in the dead middle of one of the transitions. Wait, why Not would they do that, that? But remember that reverse orange trill from Through the Fire and Flames? Imagine that, but incredibly offbeat, and you have to strum some of the orange notes, meaning you either <laughs> have to one hand everything, or you can elbow strum while tapping it. Chris had posted an isolated FC of the section itself, and then a month later, would complete the full game FC by FCing one on November 4th, 2011. No shot. Half a year later, Chris would make a return to DDR again, what? and it would be on DDR Supernova. Despite being released in 2006, this game still had some unfinished business for AAAs, one of those being Fascination Max. While accessible okay. under normal play for the home console version, the only way it was playable through arcade was to unlock it in extra mode, which was done by getting a double A on an expert chart on your third song. Not on only your are third you forced song? to play on 1.5x okay. scroll speed and reverse, but the chart itself is quite unforgiving, with tons of oh. BPM bursts. The notes are, the notes are going to the bottom instead of going up to the top. Section, and some more bursts to top it all off. On June 26, huh. 2012, Chris would become the first in the world to accomplish this feat, which would be Okay, hold on a second. All right, guys. I just wanna I just wanna put some stress onto that word they said. First in the world. In the world. If that is confirmed, that means he definitely beat out Japan and like Korea. Cause those are like the places that you would think like are gods at DDR. I don't wait, where are they? Are they like are they in the mix yet? Do we know about them? Like, do they know that Jap that Japan and Korea like exist yet? Because I'm ass I'm assuming that maybe this isn't the first ever, maybe it's the first ever in America. But if it's literally the first ever, that means this guy is truly, truly on a different level. Like he truly ascended. <laughs> just just right, he just ascended.
He is no longer a normal human. He is a DDR god. And that will he be his title. His first unique accomplishment in quite some time with DDR. While showing a bit of promise in dance games again, he would also take part in Fort Rapid 6. But with an extremely disappointing performance, getting swallowed in top 16, Chris would be quite unhappy with his result. And in his words, he was going to be 100% prepared. Well, yeah, they are, the but like to number one next time. If you say one in the world, that implies Shortly after a lot. Chris's performance oh, yeah, you're right. Six, I forgot. Yeah, he would meet yeah. up. With America's the only place in the world. Rinker, I yeah. to hang out and train at his you're right, my for a couple weeks. <laughs> As we noted before, top players are the main source of quality machines. And Rinker was one of the best possible choices for these circumstances, given his status as a player. Chris's first video at this machine would be a double quad with Rinker on an 11 footer. A few days later, Chris had gotten his second world record on an official chart, which was single digit excellence with a mine hit on Euphoria, the hardest chart by far to quad in In the Groove 1. What does that even mean? 30 second drills with triple transitions, a few difficult crossovers, and an out of this world slowdown section at 70 BPM that constantly changes between straightforward drills and bursts that teeter between 30 seconds and 60. Oh god, I, I hate this. To keep the world record momentum going, Hardcore of the North would see its first quad by Chris on July How did he make money? Did he have a job? Because like, how did he? Wait, oh wait, uh, I, don't, I don't think he actually bought one though. Also, I wonder why he's playing it with two people. Like, why does he have somebody else on that other side? Does that mean anything? Wad star. <laughs> it was a GG button. Go for next at this point was to set his sights on that pandemonium, a chart we've briefly shown before with its abundance of mini jacks, tail jumps, and some decently long streams. He had gotten six excellence, which showed some sort of prominence, but akin to his Miserloo progress on GH2, he wildly improved this so quickly that this also became quadded on August 1st, 2012. Bro. Oh, cool. Look, there's like a camera in the middle now. We've upgraded. Oh, that, oh this is like a real dance pad, too. Oh, my God. What the hell? Oh. Yo, the pop-offs are more are more real now. He's older. He's older. Chris would clean up a few more of the ITG officials and ended his reign with a three excellent run on Euphoria, a score that would separate himself on the rankings by a mile. Sadly, this meant that consistent machine access would be no longer available Aww. as Chris would have to go back home to dance game hibernation. But with his newfound ability to perhaps take down the entire In the Groove series single-handedly and a thirst <laughs> for redemption at the Four Rapid series, these would be the driving forces to keep him on the road to covering all bases in the game, and he would certainly find other methods to stay in tune. Bro. You fucking serious, dude. What is yeah, his... What is his goal, my guy? Three. Holy shit. Like what? While on a dance game hiatus, this would still spawn some of the most jarring rhythm game scores to date from Chris, and they weren't even on any of the games he normally played. Rather, he became a tyrant on Step Mania with the index a play tyrant. Style, where you simply use two fingers to emulate pad play. With quads on 15 footers like Trisection that have foot switches every possible second, and three excellence on Vertex Squared, which we'll go into detail later on, it was fascinating and even a bit funny to see Chris destroying these charts on super <laughs> tiny laptop keys. Remember that Euphoria chart I mentioned earlier? He would quad that on Step Mania, then again except without the notes being there at all, and then to go one step further, he quadded it on 1.1 under the same conditions. It goes Okay, hold, hold on a second, guys. I, I don't I don't know I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, there are no notes there. Um, hmm. I mean, no notes. Like, can we can, can we talk about that for a second? He's literally f seeing songs without being able to see the song, or I guess the notes on the song. Like, what? without saying that this is one of the Look. most underrated Look at and absurd this. keyboard scores to date. To be able to internalize such intricate rhythms purely by visual and muscle memory on a song like this, and to quad it on top of all that, is bewildering beyond belief. Doc, there's... There's no shot. Anybody can be this good. Like... 
There's just no way anybody can be this good at a game, right? Shortly after these scores, Fort Rapids 7 would be announced to be held from June 28th <gasps> to June 30th, 2013. Oh, and that's while so Chris cool. didn't have any genuine access to a cabinet, aside from a brief tournament showing in Harrisburg, he was still staying on top of things by playing rhythm games in some capacity, and he managed to still find a way to add new games to his resume to take number one spots on the hardest charts, Re-Rave being one of these, and Gargoyle and Black Magic being two of those songs. Okay, so he so he absolutely knows he's goaded at like any rhythm game. He's internalized rhythm games, like he is Rhythm Games. God, he... Bro. <laughs> He's seen the Rhythm Game gods, and he said, yo, I'm do Like, that's me. I'm doing that. It's point, just his score over and over again. Highly competitive world records across four different games, but with Fort Rapids 7 on the come up, there was only one game running through Chris's head that had more fierce competition than ever. What? I don't understand. Just a month before the start of Fort Rapids 7, Chris would go over to a different player's machine this time, which was Mew, and Chris would train there for a few weeks before he went to the tournament. <laughs> he had a few sessions to do some minor preparation at a nearby arcade cabinet with... So so I'm not gonna lie, this is actually giving me like hardcore like Smash Bros documentary kind of vibes. Like, you know, kind of like back in the day, he's literally just going to people's houses to train and he would he would just be there. I don't know, I don't know how he was getting there, honestly. I don't know how he's allowed to just stay there. I mean, I guess he's in college now, so he can do that. But people just had just whole dance pads in their house, and he's like, Yeah, I'll just stay there for a few days. And they just like, Oh yeah, I am Chris Fly is gonna be here to train, and they just played literally forever. That's, that's just so cool. Speakers, but like most well-maintained home machines, <laughs> Mute's machine was perfect for Chris to get at it for a few weeks straight, just like he did at Rinker's house. While his session at Rinker's Wait, a few resulted weeks? in numerous world records, Bro, Chris go managed home. to go even harder in the paint than last time, and in typical Chris Chegg fashion, went on a complete and utter tear again. Okay, they can kind of funky, okay. Is he even... Oh, wait, hold, 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 hold on a second. A few weeks straight, just oh, wait, like he did at Rinker's house. Rinker's... Wait, I just, I just want to look at... How is he... Enhance. Slow down. Let's just let's just look at my man's feet for a second. Is he even He's hitting them so precisely. Like his heel like did his heel like in the back right here is like hitting this pad and I guess that's hitting it but it looks like it's not even touching it. How precise do you have to be to hit the notes like that? Like I don't, I don't understand. He's optimized it so much that I guess you have to at the top level, right? I wish all of Fort Rapids was this easy to quad. Okay. Fort Rapids 7 uh, uh, was stacked to all the right, with cool. some of the strongest and most well-rounded ITG players uh, too. Obligatory girl. Rinker. Box, Spencer, ZRX, Cosmic Pope. These were just a few of the top dogs that all wanted a chance at the prize pool or prize pools if you opted to enter both divisions. Some of the footage for this tournament is a bit scattered around, but Mew oh was able God. to capture all of Chris's moments in top eight as Chris placed second so in the pasty, lower division, though? which allowed him to progress to this part of the tournament. With a 2-0 win over Cosmic Pope and a 2-1 win over ZRX, Chris like had this. now advanced into the final four. And unlike a standard best of three, top four matches operated under winning by a two-song lead Wait. or else both players simply kept alternating songs. Oh. Chris would go up against Cosmic Pope again. Oh, okay. But this match was looking nowhere near as favorable as Chris's last match went. Winning on the first song, Epileptic Crisis, pretty handily, Nebula would be picked by Pope. 
Chris would misread a pattern on Nebula, which cost him the point there. So now it was one Dang. to one. End of line would be next, but Chris rushed the down arrow on a crossover section that triggered a series of down arrow wayoffs, also known as a combo breaker rush or mm, CB rush. No. Now it was match point for Pope. Pope's pick would be Ditch PVC. No. A very explosive 30-second drill fest that speeds up from 135 BPM 30 second Let's go, Chris. To 160 BPM 30 second notes. Pope had the lead for the most part, but the scores would be separated by just one miss, and Chris narrowly avoided a crucial loss. <laughs> so <laughs> Chris is literally skinning by by the yeah. by the skin of his teeth. Whoa, how do you hit four notes on the pad? Wait, I don't understand. How do you hit? How do you hit four notes? How do you hit everything? Five, Brainstorm goes as well as it possibly could have as Chris nearly quadded it on command and it is now Chris who has the winning advantage. It nearly quad on command. Cyborg Bear Assault was Pope's pick. 235 foot speed bursts dictate the pace of this chart and BPMs this high can be very fragile in a tournament setting as they could play out perfectly for Chris or be his worst nightmare depending on his form. This song started out pretty normal for both players, but Pope's pad caught a massive malfunction on its left arrow during the easy eighth notes. As you can clearly see, he hit them, but four of them in a row didn't oh. register before working. Tampering? Out. Tampering, Chris? You know, I, I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to say it was you, man. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that was definitely a malfunction. Chris kept the FC and sprinted away with a lead. And as the song went on. Pope simply wasn't able to catch back up and eventually quit on one of the streams. Chris walks away with a win and a few scratches, but now he has to play Rinker for the overall title. Dang, you know, I would, I'm not gonna lie, I would be kind of salty if I was playing on this pad and then it just, it just broke. Oh, that's so sad. Ringer was Aww. the only competitor at this tournament who made the top four in both divisions, which means that his versatility would certainly pose a threat to Chris's accuracy-centered capability. Wait, there were but lower divisions and upper divisions? More, he could run the risk of being more fatigued. Chris had also been training very aggressively, though, to prepare for this type of matchup, as seen by his practice scores weeks before. Wait, wait, what is, what is upper up and lower divisions? Once again, for a pretty convincing victory, but Ringer had a stamina pick up his sleeve that would be a strong contender for him, Axel Grinder. While Chris certainly has a more than impressive score on it, this type of chart was Rinker's bread and butter given his resume of stamina quads and could <laughs> probably quad this in tournament. At the break around 40% in, they were 0.01% apart. By 60%, Chris had another excellent on Rinker. Both players do trade excellent shortly after, but Rinker begins to lose focus and drops a few more throughout. Aww. Chris has a solid lead, and as long as he doesn't miss or <laughs> catastrophically drop a bunch of excellence, a new Fort Rapids champion could be crowned. Don't worry, he definitely doesn't mess up right here, right? Like, yeah! wait, right? He, he got it, right? I think that says 99.8. Yeah. That said 99.9. Awesome. Oh my God. Yo. <laughs> Chris would win Fort Rapid 7 by nearly quadding Axel Grinder with a two excellent FC against arguably the best stamina FA player at the time, Rinker, who put up a phenomenal fight getting six excellence. What's a stamina Despite FA? Having little access to a machine and having. Yo, this, this is actually kind of crazy because if you look at the last matchup when he was playing against the other guy, like they were going like back and forth. If he didn't, if the other guy didn't have like a malfunction, it probably would have still been going. They were like two and two, then he eventually got four on him. But Chris just straight up, he just two owed him. Just just straight up. Like he just he just two owed him. Like he was like, yo, two, to to I'll give you 20 pieces real quick, houses, honestly. It was enough for Chris to fulfill his goal of taking the title and finally quench the oh thirst that he wasn't able to satisfy for a while. <laughs> now it was time for him my to My man's looking kind of strong too. Road. You see my man, he was like he's kind of working on honest. that arm muscle. If anything, maybe a Oh wait, hold on a second, guys. So you see how he's like holding on to the back of this, right? He's just like, he's like holding on to the back the entire time. What if because of like the amount of vibrations he's doing is increasing his actual bicep muscle mass? Cause he's holding up like his whole weight. 
almost honestly the whole time. And so as you do that over years and years and years, you just get you just get stronger just by virtue of playing the game. That has nothing to do with your arms. Like, isn't that isn't that kind of crazy? I think I think that's what's happening. Unless he's working out on the side. He could be. A legend road? Bro, is he already not a legend? After Chris's win at Fort Rapid 7, he went back to DDR Extreme for a visit towards the section of the game he never got the chance to delve into properly, which were the Oni Courses. Oni Courses served the purpose of being more of an endurance challenge with a bit of a twist. As compared to the non-stop courses that also have four or more songs back to back, Oni Courses have what's called a Battery Life Bar, what is this? where if you break your combo four times, you automatically fail the course. Speed oh. mods are also not allowed, so you are forced to read everything at whatever BPM the song is, aka 1x speed mod. Lastly, it also wait, uses what? what's wait, called EX scoring, which is a much more simplified and straightforward method of scoring that was used specifically for these courses. Okay. Quickly after their inception, Oni courses became highly competitive throughout the early years of DDR Extreme, and a wide variety of players have set insane oh. scores and world records oh, on them good. over time some being a bit easier to beat by 2013 standards, and some being borderline impossible. Chris wasn't quite interested in the other courses though, and immediately set his sights on Legend Road, the hardest course in the entire game. Oh, Legend Road is a song! The boss okay. songs. You have Max 300, Max Unlimited, Sakura, The Legend of Max, and lastly, Paranoia Survivor so, Max Oni, I guess he what plays is considered on, to like, be the hardest chart in all of Extreme. If you can handle loads of bursts okay. at around 300 BPM, tons of BPM changes in general, a few stops and goes, and the hardest crossover in the entire game, then look no further than Legend Road. The world record at this time was 8,033 points, set oh. by Blue Mystic on September okay, 13, 2006. 8,053? on July 10th, 2013, <laughs> but was only able to capture proper footage of 8,054. Throughout the next 10 oh, days, man. Chris had increased this score he could only get three more times and even sprinkled in a blindfolded attempt for fun, failing on the last song. By July 19th, 2013, his score was now at 8,093, and not only was it the first double-digit perfect run of its kind, but also <laughs> close to the 8,100 mark. On July 22nd, 2013, imagine doing multiple he songs that mark right on the nose, but shortly blindfolded after, he was and just failing on the last one. More. Where if you drop your combo then you lose like a like a life bar or whatever and you can only mess up three times new world record shout out to charles kevin 8100 chris went back to the cutting board for some more improvements because while he had equaled the 8100 mark with the triple a and got double digit perfects on one of his prior runs he still never put the two together to create the ultimate last goal of legend road the double digit perfect triple a no misses no greats just a perfect full combo with less than 100 perfects Chris had been setting With new less than records on some perfects? of the songs individually, and on that same day, would be on pace to fulfill his final goal with the course. Why do people always go to the extreme? Why can't they just be happy? Okay, why can't they just like where they're at? It's... It's not enough to just do it with practically every Marvelous. You gotta have less than a hundred perfects. You know, I guess uh, I guess perfects are pretty bad. Oh, he, he oh he had a miss. So. Okay, well I guess he had he had one miss. So. That's pretty bad, right? God, these damn pads. That would have been it. Still a world record though. Shout out to Charles, Kevin, and Lizzie. <laughs> Does he have to say after every single word record? During a trivial section of PSMO, <laughs> he always has to give his shout out. Chance of the double digit perfect triple A. If there's anything Chris is through the fire and flames journey taught us though, it's that when he has a goal, so he funny. will spend as much time as possible until he's buried it into the ground. And a few days later, he would have a once in a lifetime run on deck. Okay. 
Does he get it though? I feel like he's got this. The person's putting it like this. I feel like he has to, right? He has all of his combos. He finished the song. I think, right? Nope. All right, he says all his combo. He got an okay though, unfortunately. Wait, or is that is that bad? Is that good? Oh. Not a single miss. Is there is there oh, okay well i guess it has to go to at least eight thousand, right so he has at least a few more songs <laughs> he's still going <laughs> he's still going he's sweating so much yes. you know i want to see why this guy put so much work into this pfc finally shout out to charles kevin busy i need out with this shit best perfect count triple a yeah. oh my god Chris had this a dude is crazy the last barrier of legend road by getting an 80 perfect triple a and 8125 points on july 28 2013. He also lowered some of the Legend Road songs' individual records by a few. Why doesn't he just go for all Marvel? Right? All the songs individually Marvel's on like in a row the best. to prove his outright dominance a few more times on the hardest course in all of the extreme. This would end up just being the very beginning, as while Chris shattered one record, there were 29 others he decided he wanted to beat, and a lot of these certainly weren't just going to come to him as easily as they did for Legend Road. Okay. So the lower level Naoki courses were extremely competitive. He just, due to he just how goes straight to the next easier they were. I guess which made game. them a pure accuracy player's ultimate test of their abilities. Some of the other difficult records to take down were just set Wait, a what couple is years song? ago by Chilean player Mysterio, obliterating courses like Classic, Dance Mania Oni, and From 2DX. MICH had some absurd scores so on Harry familiar Oli Brothers and on arguably the most competitive Oni course, Naoki Neo Standard. With his own machine now acquired, August was the month for Chris, as he took down 23 of the course records, whittling the list down to just six Yo, world records left. He Chris bought his own pad. Perfects, but others he destroyed by 50 to 100 points. Naoki Neo Standard was definitely Go. the most impressive record he managed to take from MICH, as he beat it by just two perfects. I mean, like we're like 2014 now, right? Like, do we not have some some good some good capture now for this? Trying to all right, it's just shout out to Lizzie this time on really any difficult or heavy chart with one X speed mod is a daunting task to fulfill. But Chris managed to secure the right run and continued on. Except he didn't actually. Wouldn't it be really funny after like the end of like if he made like YouTube videos and stuff? Like at the end of it, he says like, "Oh, that was a great YouTube video, guys." Uh, shouts to uh, uh, Reiner, Charles, and Izzy or Lizzie. You guys, you guys are the best. Like that—that that was just a sign-out message. That would be—I don't know why. I don't know why it's so funny to me. In late September of 2013, <laughs> Chris had been playing DDR X3 versus Second Mex, a mix that had loads of difficult content that Chris could properly take a swing at that he didn't originally have access to before. How he had access to this mix at home is uh well done through different means let's just say so for technicality's sake well these records will all be considered hypothetical as you'll often hear him note this somewhere within his videos this wait, will also be the first time in the is video we formally introduced the x scale that ddr uses nowadays ranging from 1 to 19 as opposed to the inherently limited <laughs> 1 to 10 scale triple a's is my man's out here now, as 990k is the cutoff for a triple a oh, okay getting all perfects is now primarily referred to as a perfect full combo or pfc so Chris wait had been getting hypothetical world records left and right blazing through the 200 wait, I don't streams and crossovers on stuff like fast so is Max he just is he modding the game so he can get a Mix, higher score through super turn heavy crossovers what score like would be if it Division, counted all of the in terms points of brand new charts he would nail a pfc on valkyrie i think that's what heavy. they're saying there were a couple players during this time that were also right on Chris's tail or ahead of him in some respects, 
But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Oh my god. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Is that Dante? From Devil May Cry? <laughs> was, was that Dante? Fifth PFC of that. Got way too many perfects at the end there. Could have been a lot lower in the 30s. After giving DDR X3 a whirl sure and seeing Dante. how he would handle some of the more physically demanding charts, okay, never mind. Yards, Chris returned to extreme. Nah, it could still be Dante, the honestly. Only courses, <laughs> as the reason why he stopped in the first place was because he was feeling a bit burned out with them and started having genuine trouble tackling the last few records down. Before this, he would come back with some highly technical MFCs on charts like Reign of Sorrow and La More y la Liberté, so Chris meant business with his return to the game. Oh. The last two Naoki courses, Politeri and the standard one, would be beaten by two points and one point respectively. This guy literally can't be stopped! So... I noticed these OKs, but they only come at the end. I guess the OK signifies that you finished like the long line. One point. Shout outs to Lizzie. <laughs> Shout outs to Lizzie. The most competitive courses yeah, the Lizzie. <laughs> two remaining Road of 2MB and Paranoia Brothers Max 2. Both high octane courses packed with songs from 190 to 200 BPM and both ridiculous records that were thought to be virtually unbeatable as averaging just a little over 12 perfects on decently <laughs> difficult material across five songs is insane when you think about how tight Extreme's timing windows are. Chris would take the Road of 2MB record by one point the same day as his Naoki oh. standard record, and after a few days of grinding, he would take the final Oni course record on March 13th, 2014. Fuck. This dude is crazy. He's out here taking all the records. He just. I gotta fucking crush that shit. You're so fantastic. Oh, he did it. Dazzled. Shout outs to Lizzie. The record on Paranoia Brothers Max 2, which is the last Oni course I needed to get the world record okay. on all the DDR Extreme Oni courses. Uh, all you guys in the community. Bro, if he doesn't okay, say I'm it. With this shit. No, he didn't say it this just time. A matter of a couple he literally said it every playing, other time. Chris took each and every <laughs> single one of the DDR Extreme Okay, whatever. Records. Two of these would be beaten down the line by Ben Madsen in 2017, but for four years straight, the Oni Course of World Records page was a thing of beauty, <laughs> a stark <laughs> reminder of Chris's perfectionist <laughs> mindset that never gives up under any circumstances. It literally just and says, I am Chris time, for life. Was undoubtedly the king of DDR Extreme now. Over the next year or two, yeah, yeah, he was. would lay a little low aside from a Vertex Squared World Record of Two Excellence, but now we need to fast forward into the most revolutionary era of Dance Dance Revolution. It was the renaissance era of a lifetime that the American DDR scene would get, and would birth the most competition the game had ever seen across the world. The mix that would do all of this was called the DDR Ace. DDR Ace? Wait, I feel like I've seen that one. I, I feel like I've literally seen that one, like, like actually in arcades. Oh, were there gonna be like On actual 30th, more tournaments? 2016, DDR A, pronounced DDR Ace, would be the newest DDR arcade cabinet to hit the world. It was teased at the 5th Konami Arcade Championships, but at the time there wasn't oh, a ton of information on snap. it since it wasn't open to the public yet. Oh. Once cabinets made their way over to North America, albeit very few of them at first, they realized they had e-amusement access and the pads were in fantastic condition. For those who e don't know what e-amuse is, it yeah. basically means that for the first time in DDR NA history, they had online access and there were just about no strings attached either. What? The ability to save your scores online, access extra songs, but the one that stood out the most by far what? was direct competition with everyone across the world. Oh my the God. The Renaissance era for DDR seemed like it was just never going to come. But it Yo, did, what? The North American DDR scene erupted and the first man to be setting records left and right was of course, Chris Trike himself. 17s, 18s, held even a 19. Nothing was going Bro. to stop this man, except for potentially a few players. Bro, my man literally can fight anybody around the world Since now. We are on the topic of NA Japan DDR, exists. It's we'll gotta. Start with these players: <laughs> Kase 573, aka Hudson Felker, Chunka, okay. aka Paul Sadowski, and Funga, aka Jeff Lloyd. 
All of them have a history of around 15 plus years of experience with dance games, but their experiences vary. Kaze spent most of his time juggling DDR and Pump It Up, took lots of breaks here and there, but would make a grand return once DDR Ace came out and was able to pump out some solid scores right out of the gate. Uh, Chunga they, was they just said and solid. still one of the strongest ITG players in the entire game, as his accuracy is second to none on some of the hardest charts around, and with Ace, this would be his first genuine attempt and motivation towards the DDR game. Funga has the most DDR experience out of the three, and is arguably Chris's biggest rival from a skill set standpoint, as while he doesn't quite have the foot speed for the 19-footers, his scores on the 18s and below can rival Chris quite often, and you'll see him take records is off this of guy like, this time. Are too. these like the four Chris gods of DDR? FFMs, who is a world-class Pump It Up player, along oh. with being proficient at so many other rhythms. They're games. diagonals! He would display his dominance in DDR starting in 2014, Whoa. where he would set multiple world records well, in both wait, singles and doubles sometimes? Play, and is potentially the most agile dance game player to date. Lastly, okay, from Japan, not. we have Rosoni, aka O4MA. He's virtually stuck to DDR his entire rhythm game career in terms of active play, and has consistently stayed as the <laughs> best player in Japan for a while. Oh, Japan! Being capable of contesting some world records here. Japan! In the they're here! Few months, all of Japan's these players here! Woo! Back and forth in some fashion. Some more than others at taking world records left and right. Jeff and Chris were the main top dogs, but the others were certainly not slacking by any means. Chris was taking records on the 17s and 18s constantly, and Jeff was also taking a few of his own on top of getting the Bro. first ever 16-footer MFC. How do you have Chris the time? with even more world records and becomes the first person to MFC a 17. How, how do you have the time? Where do you find the time to keep doing this? How, how do you just keep going? How to understand? While these two How do you have a height man? Where's 2016? I want a height man. Other elites chiming in here and there. The end of the year brought up an opportunity for everyone to compete on the same exact playing field with the same set of songs, and this event was the Konami Arcade Championships. Ooh! Konami announced its sixth edition of the Konami Arcade Championships event, a series run by Konami where it showcases the best players in the world and even new versions of their games at times oh too. My, oh While geez. it was primarily centralized between Asian countries, this would not be the case anymore. Yeah. For the first time ever, North America would be able to not only bring one qualifier, but two of the best players from NA, along with there being a wild card pick too, meaning that whoever is the best player that aren't the highest seeds in any of the qualifiable regions, they can go as well. Japan oh! and Asia also got two players to bring. Yo, this is actually legit! People total can qualify. It also utilizes EX scoring, which again, utilizes a very simple method of scoring and is much different than how Ace's scoring functions. Wait, what? The qualifying period would last about a month and a half, from December 1st, 2016 to January 12th, 2017, 18 o'clock Japanese Standard Time. 18 o'clock? The qualifiers were okay. split up into two packs of songs, and every player tries to score as well as they can. The catch is that these groups of songs must be played in one set, so you have to perform well in these songs back to back, but you can play them in any order you'd like. Oh, okay. Throughout the month of December, okay. Chris, Funga, and Fafems were the primary front runners in the beginning, and with just a few weeks before entries close... Bro, imagine... Uh, imagine you're a kid you're like oh look ddr i want to play as this as this tall probably 20 something year old man is saying sorry kid i'm practicing for the konami championships you can't play <laughs> and then you just and then you're just like oh okay as you walk away dejectedly as he keeps fc'ing the next the same six songs in a row chris was leading by yeah. 10 points over funga and 26 over for fems by January, the placements hadn't altered too much, but oh some last-minute changes would take place on the NA side, as Chris and Funga had improved their overall scores last minute, and Kaze did the same thing, sniping chunk of scores hours before the qualifiers ended to become the wild card pick, which means Ooh. that three Americans had qualified for there the KAC. Go. The trio of Americans would be Yo. flown out to Japan to potentially have a shot at the title, which at this point was held by Fafems for two years in a row. Oh, yeah. Th th this guy's about to get destroyed. The this American guy literally just were having a, a great time in Japan. But of course, while they're there, they must be staying in top shape. And Chris would actually get a chance to do an exhibition match against Fafems the day before the event. Playing some of the 19s, Chris would show his dominance on Egoism 440 as he had in the past. But their match on Over the Period was perhaps one of the most theatrical exhibition matches. Theatrical? In DDR period.
Yo, let, let's go Chris for life. Truly a goat of his crap. A much simpler time when you can hug and everything is okay. Oh my God. Yo, Chris literally won by 10 points. Literally by 10 points. What? That's so close. <laughs> Since Chris, Brosoni, and Fafems were the number one seeds in their respective regions, this meant that they had a freebie towards the finals. The other four had to play a semi-finals match in which all four competed on two songs, chosen by the second highest seed from each of the regions, which meant Funga and Gaho got to choose them. Gaho opted for New Decade Challenge, and Funga chose Trip Machine Evolution Challenge. Funga swept the other three and even oh set a God. new world Why is this so hyped though? Evolution. So now the finals were officially set in stone and the real match would be underway shortly after. Yo, yo, Team USA? Or, right? <laughs> okay. Funga! Chris Yo, the GOAT! Yes, the GOAT! Let's go, my guy! The issue with the Konami Arcade Championships, especially with DDR, is that there wasn't any way at this time to properly warm up at the venue. Oh, to Normally, warm up? Officially. Normally players sets before yes. they were warm enough to play Oh, he's literally officially the GOAT. In the game, but that wasn't the case at all. Chris had to go as far as to warm up on a handrail on a random stairway, but since we know that he has so many DDR charts memorized, thankfully this method would play out rather well. Bro, Regardless, that's actually crazy! Was technically in the same boat, and with the final starting soon, Chris, Brosoni, and Fafems he was would playing choose the songs, their songs from memory that would dictate the pace of who would be the next world champion of DDR. This guy's another level! Oh. This guy's another level! <laughs> Can we get some Japanese subtitles? Egoism 440 challenge. Brosoni chose Dead End Groove Radar Special, a hilariously gimmicky 18 footer chock full of <laughs> mini jack jump transitions, triple jack jumps, bracket jumps, oh crossover God. on crossover. Some players will even go as far as to use turn mods for this chart because it's genuinely that silly in its original form. Fafems' pick would be Paranoia Revolution Challenge. This 19-footer holds no punches in the crossover department either, but also has a healthy amount of foot switches, Wait, 180 steps, to 360? The BPM? Not only is the slowdown section one of the hardest in the entire game to read what? and execute, but the outro goes as far as to have 360 BPM 16th bursts on top of the crossover section you have to transition out of. Lastly, to Bro. no surprise, Chris chose Egoism 440 Challenge. Literally not a 440 fair. BPM chart that has tons of straightforward but brutally fast streams, a technical slowdown section, 440, the 440 BPM? BPM death run at the end, and some tricky stops to wrap it all up. Dog, this dude. These people are crazy. Let it rip. I would be so nervous. The scoring is just like how it operated during the semifinals. All four players compete on the same set of songs, and whoever has the highest <laughs> total of the three Little songs illegal is crowned BPMs. the new champion. Dead End Groove Radar Special was the first pick, and Fafems and Funga started out first. Fafems would FC the song with solid accuracy, oh, okay. and even held a PFC for a while at one point, while Funga held up reasonably well with good MA. Oh. Oh, Funga definitely did not win this then, I guess. Yeah, FM, FM, FC. seed. All right, that makes sense. Chris and Brosoni were up next to play, and Chris's MA held up well in the first half and was even on PB pace going into the second half, but he would catch a string of misses during some of the crossovers, no! but luckily didn't flounder too hard on the ending. Ah! <laughs> oh, God. Is, did he make it, though? He made it, though, right? <laughs> With he this, lost! Fafems would have a seven point lead, and it was now time to go into Fafems' pick, Paranoid Revolution. Fafems and Funga both stayed pretty close together, 
but Fafems was oh, able God. to pull away with the lead in the second half to cement another solid score. Chris was performing fine on the MA side as usual with his run, but was catching far too many misses, resulting in losing points to not just Fafems, but fell behind Fungi's score too. No! No, not Chris! Not Chris for life! No, he missed the last yeah. note! Ah! Uh, oh, Chris! Minus 35? Chris had 35 points to make back up in order to contest for Femmes, and was only a few oh, points God, you're right. as well to I'm sure to was... to even third. <laughs> While it was Chris's pick, Can he seems to have five their claims? any sort of consistency no shot. in the last two songs. Right, we believe in our boy Chris. If 19 for a comeback to happen on, it was going to be Egoism 440. For Femmes was up first, so it at least allowed Chris to have an idea of what he would need to do in order to win. Fafems' combo game was looking stronger than ever, just oh, catching God. one miss near the beginning and F seeing the insane ending, but he also had his fair share of greats that would set his score back okay, up. Okay. Because with the X scoring, okay. misses don't punish that much, so if Chris could stick to his MA planned and not afford too many misses, he could very well make up that point deficit off of that alone oh, God. that Is he, he gonna... desperately needed more than ever to debut as a world champion. Wait, which one is Chris? I don't know which one is Chris. Oh, wait, he's 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 on the left. Oh, Chris won. Yes, let's go. Egoism. Oh. Oh wait. Oh, Chris won. Let's go. Let's go, Chris! Yo, he's the GOAT! Let's go! <laughs> this is my first opportunity first opportunity to do it, and I did it. I succeeded. Yo, what a GOAT! I'm Let's go! Taking the title back to America. <laughs> All right, you know, American thing to say, but that, that's Chris cool. Chris Chike had become the first American to win a Konami Arcade Championship and was crowned the new world champion of Dance Dance Revolution. The entrance of DDR Ace into the American this is what scene we need for representation. had already single-handedly revived the community itself, but now with the forefront of DDR having all eyes on Chris Chike from around the world, America was now the beacon that represented this <laughs> game wholeheartedly. Chris would go right back to playing not long after his win, still chasing after that notion of perfection towards the game by nabbing world record after record still. But oh my god, he he's still running hot too? Hovering above him, would he be able to defend it? holding America on his back. He literally is. He's literally carrying the entire country. He's like, all right, guys, time to, it's time to huff it. Let's go. This was on top of the world after <laughs> his KAC win, gamers. as he was fueled That's more than ever to true. go after each that and is every literally world true. the game had to offer and divulged his interest we have in melee, games, such as PFC Remember, we have the melee. entire game on Expert and MFCing all of DDR Extreme on Expert 2. Out of all the DDR goals left, however, there was a major one that had yet to be fulfilled, and Chris was definitely the closest to it. It was to become the first person to perfect full combo, a 19-footer. We've seen quite a few of the 19-footers by now, but realistically full one combo? was the most viable by a fair margin to PFC, and it would be the exact same chart that won Chris's KAC title. Egoism 440 Challenge. Oh, God. The forward nature of this chart, albeit very fast at times with its 16th note burst at 440 BPM, still make it one of the hardest charts 440? in the game. 440? Mechanically, it's the easiest of the 19s. Chris had begun his journey to PFCing it on April 15th, 2017. The easiest. Before this was a 63 perfect, two great FC from late 2016. In a matter of two days, he had four notable chokes where he kept dropping a single great, or in the worst case scenario, getting no grades, but tragically dropping a miss. The sessions oh. would still end up being productive, as not only was he actively inching closer, but one of these runs would be the first ever 999K run as well. 999K? Oh my God. Look at my man's feet. He's literally vibrating like the flash. Oh, oh, yo, oh, he, he, got, he got the point guard armband? My man has the goat? On August 9th, 2017, Chris would enter a DDR tournament in Irving, California, where Funga would be present. While he won in winner's final Ooh, 2 Funga? Zero, Funga would come back through losers to win grand final 6-1. to one. While this tournament displayed some visible weakness with Chris, 
This, if anything, motivated him Six to, to iron one? out his 17s and 18s even more than Dofunga usual. Dofunga was acting goaded! 2017, Chris had another promising Egoism 440 session going, where he'd get a one great, one miss run, only to sadly drop a great and a miss during the death stream at the end, but not during either the 16th note burst or the ending gimmicks either. Oh man. And that's a, that, that's a little bit of a heartbreaker, to be honest. Get the DDR master fit. Bro, I'm gonna get the uh, the, the armband, the, uh, the, the, the sneakers, the shorts, and the t-shirt. From late October to early December, that, that's how you do it. Multiple MFCs on many 16s and 17s, <laughs> such as Monkey Business Challenge. Elemental Where's his Nike Expert, deal? Uh, challenge, they, they probably just didn't see him. Feeling much they probably more missed it. On the they probably missed the craze. The 17s now, he they're literally, the once again, they're literally so the sad right now. They missed that this train. Radar special, trigger challenge, and new decade challenge. Moving up the difficulty ladder, there was only one logical solution left, and that was for Chris to revisit an old goal of his that he was in the best shape of his life to go for, and that was to greet egoism. You know, it's actually funny because this has the best shape of his life, the world, and they mean that literally as well. Like, he is in great shape because all he does is play DDR. I just want to see this man. I just want to see this man's gains, right? I want to see him just like just just flex on him, like this is from DDR, baby. This is what I do. I think that'd be so funny. Ah, oh, that's a heartbreaker. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Chris would choke somewhere in the song he had never done before, hesitating on one of the slowdowns and tarnishing the PFC. As much as it would make an even more theatrical redemption arc, there was just no way Chris was going to take no for an answer after he literally like that, wasn't. So he went. Right he back is to the literally wave on dashing on the machine, quite to literally. The first person in the world <laughs> to PFC a nineteen footer. <laughs> I, I, you know, I feel like he's all he literally drinks. Nah, actually, he only drinks water. I, yeah, I have no idea how my man is getting his energy. Like, how is he able to survive on this? Yo, my man popped off. Let's go! My man popped off. Let's go! The nine 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 three twenty. Let's go! A nineteen footer PFC was thought to be one of the more unrealistic feats in DDR for a while. Oh my even god! Chris was rather close in twenty sixteen. The 16th and Egoism 440 were thought to be borderline impossible to PFC in isolation, let alone in the heat of a <laughs> PFC run. So there was no doubt this was widely considered to be the most prolific DDR score of all time now. This would also serve as the grand return to his official I Am Chris For Life channel that he abandoned for years since it was left to be an archive of his older Guitar Hero and DDR videos. He's but literally he's crazy. A champion and in full form, his exuding confidence allowed him to publicly rebrand himself on YouTube once again as the pseudonym everyone knew him as. Now that it's the end of the year, oh. you're probably wondering if the next KC was announced. It was. But the thing is, since Chris won the last iteration, he automatically qualified. Oh, okay. They also slightly altered the qualification standards, Wait, as now only one participant was allowed to qualify from North America, and it would be yet again Funga placing first overall in the qualifiers oh, okay. above Chris. The two would meet shortly before departing to Japan in a Yo. New York Extreme tournament. Funga kind of has Chris's number, aka Random Caprice. Yo, and Funga Genesis just five, G five in the bottom of the corner. Back sets through losers. Oh, look at that! Finals. Chris did have a tournament win or two in 2017, but things were looking a tad shakier than normal. Imagine having the motivation to want to be the best for, for the period years. world record, and since he qualified for KAC two, he was looking to do something if he made That's the final four. That's actually crazy when you put into perspective Chris, like that. With a shaky tournament record and his scores on 18s being threatened more often, oh my to god, say there was pressure building up would be an understatement. He said, "I want to be, I want to be the best at this." And that's it. I will dedicate my life to it. People are just like that, though. They just dedicate their lives to being the best at what they truly love. And this guy loves DDR. Like, oh my god. Yo, the goat, my man's in here. He has a little bit less hair on his head, but that's okay. That's okay. Automatically qualified. He got to sit back and watch the fireworks during the semifinals to see who would face off against him. 
The oh wait! Oh, he automatically gets to the zones, finals, and half of them would advance based off of their total wait, points. Is that how that charts, works? Which were Pluto relinquished expert and Paranoia Hades challenge. Fungi and Fafems had qualified by a landslide, and Japanese player Hoforketi would stay not too far off to sneak on by too. Here was the biggest issue that posed towards Chris. He didn't get to choose a song for the final. He should have chose Egoism. Okay, dead end. Uh, Saber Wing, Akira Headshot Mix Challenge. Okay. Oh, what? Chris didn't get to choose? Dead end group radar special. Funga chose Saber Wing Challenge. And not too surprisingly, Fafems had opted for Over the Period Challenge. Did he practice any of these songs? Like, did he ever get a chance to? Technical crossovers and a speed up that you really just have to bracket in order to get any viability from it. This fits a pump it up player like Fafems perfectly. So Chris was going to need to perform pretty well on the first two songs if he wanted to have a shot at keeping his title. I feel like he's going to lose it. I feel like the cards are kind of stacked against him. Yo, look at them. Look at them. They're homies. Hey. Last year, the scoring was strictly through EX, but KC completely changed that to a placement-based scoring, where first grants you 10 points, second okay. is 9, third is 8, and fourth is 7. This I kind of do doubt Chris the GOAT. be able to rely on a very strong score to catch himself back up like last year. He was now more or less competing on a song-by-song -song basis. But oh God! Got the crowd going with his four great FC on Dead End Groove Radar special. There's a Kip pandemic coming that they the don't know about. Holder on the song. Wait, this isn't 2019, is it? Wait, when is this actually? Oh, okay, cool. We do have names in the bottom left. Wait, wait, who won? Who won? Chris for life literally lost by one point. Foreign. Nice. In a last second change, Funga was able to beat Chris by one point, which in this context is massive given the tournament structure. Bro. Saber Wing, the first 17 footer seen in a finals match since the fourth game. Yo, did it say 2019? Oh, PFC God. 20 perfects. Oh, so no. More or less pigeonholed into PFCing himself along with needing to beat Funga, who has surpassed him a number of times in this difficulty of songs. Yo, Funga? Funga has had my man's number for a while. Yeah, I agree. Bad rule set change. Oh, God. Oh, Chris, we're like, let's go! Chris, for life, <laughs> Chris would beat Fafems by one point, but since Funga lost to Fafems by one point, Funga would only get eight points, which would mean Chris only made back up one point instead of two. What? In order for Chris I don't understand. to win now, the most likely scenario would be for Fafems to flounder for third and for Funga to get second right in the middle. Or if Fafems gets second, they play some sort of tiebreaker. The problem was, the last song was over the period. Fafems' pick. They've had a close match before last year's KAC, but when you give your opponent an entire year to improve, and against the world record holder of said song nonetheless, they are literally trying to get my mans to lose. The to make back up. They literally don't want my mans to succeed. That's why they made these rules. I, I was trying to keep a brother down. Fafems. <laughs> Is he the... Yeah, yeah, of, of course, of course he won on that one. Oh my god, why is it going so fast? <laughs> Yo, Chris for life, the GOAT? Yo, my man's the GOAT? Yo, he stays in here! Oh, what? Despite not being far off his personal best, the score simply wouldn't be enough to make back up the gap Fafems had put onto Chris, and Fafems would walk away with a more than confident win to take the title back to South Korea and to win his third KAC. While Chris had set world record after record and became the first person to PFC in 19, All right, at this respect. Time just didn't seem to follow through the way Chris had envisioned. 
It wasn't all gloomy for him, though, as a second place finish at KC is nothing to scoff at. Plus, during yeah. the extra exclusive after party tournament, Chris handled <laughs> everybody in the round robin finals without losing a single game <laughs> and even set a new world record on Healing Division Challenge. Yo, he was mad. Another you know, he was so by, mad that he was Chris like, yo, I'm just going to destroy everybody. His resume of scores, but at the next KC, he would fall short to Fafems again. He couldn't seem to beat Fafems through KAC's format, but he did manage to secure a 3 to 1 win over Fafems in a traditional tournament setting at the next extra exclusive tournament. And to this oh, okay. day, is probably one of the best DDR matches ever recorded. You know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we, we take these. these. We take these, baby. Fafems. We take these. Fafems. Holy shit. Oh, wait. No, no, we don't take these. A PFC. PFC. Whoa. Whoa. He tied the world record. He oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, no. Chris for Life he lost. No. You know what? Forget everybody else. All right. It, we we Chris for Life gang. All right. Oh, he just, he just barely, barely got that one out. Barely. Oh, no. No, for Femmes. Bro, leave my man's. Oh, wait. Chris, Chris, let's go. Chris, let's go. Tie, tie, tie. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here tonight. It is a tie. He literally tied. Back and Bro, forth. What? Just tied the world record on the, on the after stream, on the 20 stream. Oh, my God. Literally one point. Yo, Chris for life was mad. Yo, he was mad. He's like, yo, I'm not losing. I am not losing. Oh my god. Oh, is this best of five? Oh no. Oh, he takes it. He takes it. Chris takes it. Wow. The goat takes it. The goat. Chris takes it. Oh Chris my god. Films. Oh my god. Ah, oh, you know what? We're gonna have to save chapter nine for next time. Oh my good. Yo, this is actually super duper good. I I am I'm su I'm heavy into this. I'm I'm heavy, heavy into this. And he he is quite possibly the most dedicated man ever. I don't I don't know if there's anybody more dedicated to than this man, honestly. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. This dude this dude was crazy. Did you see this dude? Did you see him? Oh my okay, yeah, we're definitely gonna finish that uh soonish. I don't know when, but we're gonna finish that because that was oh, Chef's Kiss Incredible. And now as we end the night and we wind down. We must do what we must do. And that is... Go to... Wait, what? Why is it like this? We go to Twitch. And we find a Twitch streamer. Uh, We do this. We do that. Alright, so let's see. Who... Are we going to find today? Why does it look like this? Uh, transform. Uh, stretch the screen. There we go. So let's see. Hmm. Who are we going to try and uh? Who are we gonna try and raid today? Any uh any any suggestions? Maybe uh maybe train wrecks needs me. Uh, <laughs> need actual parents. <laughs> oh, need actual. Okay, whatever. Hmm, let's see. Do I want to do I want to do Pokemon? So let's see. Last time, last time we did uh a guy, right? So this time we do we do a girl on on whatever on whatever stream that we do. Okay, let's see. Uh maybe not Pokemon this time. Maybe maybe melee? Oh wait, wait, wait. is it is it oh. Okay. I got I got to <laughs> I got to search the brawl category uh for us uh, for super smash brothers okay hold on a second ssbb and I, i'm gonna try and find somebody that, that's playing pm 
Sick. They're all playing PM. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. <laughs> this is actually funny because these two people are playing each other. And I love this. All right. Let's see. Multiple studies have shown that surgeons who game make 32% ah. less errors. I'm not gaming for me. I'm gaming for you. Okay. All right. Kind, kind of cringe, but whatever. Omen. All right. Let's see. Uh, no stream. Hmm. Grab armor. Ooh, nice. You know what? We'll 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 we'll, we'll do we'll do it for the homie. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's really funny because I definitely said girl, but then I just went. I just did this. All right, all right. Ne next, next category. The next category. Ne ne next time we'll do P plus. Let's see what what category are we doing? Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. I have. I, oh, ooh, ooh, ho Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight. We'll do. We'll do. A, we'll do a Hollow Knight category. Oh, look at Silk Song, the game that's. The game that's not out. Incredible. <laughs> hey, I didn't I didn't assume that. I just you know there 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 could have been. Alright, let's see. Who is Ooh, super chill. Super chill. Alright. I don't even care about Geo. This Karai Karai twelve. Ben. Double that viewer count. Hey, we're doing it. Stop. We're doubling the viewer count, team. All right, let me uh, let me go ahead and I get to the bench and not die. Do my do the thing. Is that asking too much, game? Here we go, guys. We're going in. Okay. Everybody, make bench. sure make sure to give her a follow. Make sure make sure to say like, hey, what's up? We're here from the CP9 gang, <laughs> and and ju and just be nice. Say something nice about her stream. All right, we're raiding. Go go go! <laughs> verified accounts. I'm verified. CP and Neji is raiding. Thank you so much for the raid. Hi, raiders. Uh, is, is that how you pronounce your name? I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for the raid. Uh, okay, I didn't I get the alert. That That's kind of sad. Um, but Let's that's alright. Really I'll quick. fix that. <laughs> raid in with a party of three. Welcome, welcome. How was your stream? Were you playing Hollow Knight? Oh, I, I, I literally can't say anything oh right gosh. now. gosh. Bro, I like... <laughs> I have to put in my security token? Uh, what is this? Not the right way. <laughs> I, I, well, I literally have to bear, bro. Oh, bro, what the freak sunny. is this? Welcome, welcome. Is it, isn't it English? English? Okay. I'm, I'm assuming English. Uh. <laughs> oh, what's up? I had to verify my account. Oh, I see, I see. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. How are you tonight? Or or whenever it is, whatever time it is for you. Thank you so much for the raid. How was your stream? Oh my gosh, I don't like this. Oh, I hate bungee jumping. Oh, there's my ghost. Might as well collect it since I'm here. Ah! Thank you so much for the follow, Jonah M14. Thank you so much for the follow. My stream was great. Uh, I'm doing good. It's like 9 p.m. Reacted to a rhythm game video. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, CPN Neji, is that how you pronounce your name? 
I have no idea. I'm so sorry. I'm really bad with names. Like, pronouncing them. Okay, bungee jumping. Can't do that. Ah! Okay. Are you interested? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Okay, cool. Uh, doko. Are you interested in Hollow Knight? Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, okay. I, I should have. I should have. Hollow I Knight's dashed. so good. I love Hollow Knight. It's definitely like a top 10 game for me. I see. I see. I am new to Hollow Knight. Um, and I don't really know what's going on. I'm quite bad at it as well, as you can tell. <laughs> but I'm just having fun with this game. It's very cute looking. I, th I think most things are cute. He's so nice! Is this your first playthrough? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I can't bungee jump! No! Okay. Alright. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. I need to bungee jump when they're together. <laughs> Alright, when they like are together, that's when I need to bungee jump. Just wait for the perfect timing. Ah! <laughs> I panicked! Oh. There's no other way I can do it. You got this. Just stay calm and be patient. Uh, uh, oh, I can't stay calm during this. Uh, being patient, I can do that. Being calm, uh-uh. I am never calm at this game. <laughs> Especially when it comes to comes to bungee jumping. Oh, whatever. I just missed my chance. So yeah, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Kurai or Shin. You can call me whichever. <laughs> and I just died. <laughs> I need to just grab on to the wall and just, just stay put. Anyway, my name is Kurai or Shin. You can just call me whichever uh, name suits you. I, I'm currently playing Hollow Knight right now. But I do play a lot of Genshin Impact, so if you do play Genshin, uh, then that's cool. If you don't, that is also cool. Right now, we're just trying to <laughs> figure out Hollow Knight. Uh, I don't think I'm going the right way. No, I am going the right way. It's fine. I've never played Genshin. I kind of want to, but I feel hesitant to start. I see, I see. Um, I was kind of like that at the start too, not gonna lie. Uh, but what really caught me was like the art, because I'm, I'm somebody who really likes art in games. Um, yeah, I was kind of hesitant to play Genshin as well, just because it was become it was so popular. A lot of people liked it, and I was just I I'm not normally drawn to things that a lot of people like, uh, but Genshin's art was just too pretty to pass up. Oh my goodness, that scares me. Uh, am I going the right way? But if you don't ever start Genshin, that is all right. It becomes quite of a grindy game when you do get the hang of it but if you're like new to it then it's it's quite fun if you're a new player you don't know what much is going on there's a lot of content and yeah uh, okay wait wait can I go up okay Genshin feels <laughs> Why can't I just skip the parkour? <laughs> I don't want to do this. I might have to give it a shot. Oh, you don't have to, but it is fun. I like it, personally. I might as well collect my ghost while I'm here. You 
know what, I'm not even concerned about my Geo anymore. I could not care less. <laughs> Sacrifices were meant to be made. <laughs> oh. Have you ever played Octopath Traveler? No, I have not played that. Oh, I should have went just right now. I have not played that game. Uh, is it even a game? Okay. Ah! Oh! Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. I love- if you love art styles and games, please check it out. Okay, I will. What is it called? Let me just check. Chikishimashou Octopath Traveler. I have so many games on my to playlist. Oh yeah, it seems like a like an RPG or an MMO type thing, is it? It's on the Switch. It's on the. S oh, it's a Nintendo game. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. It seems a lot like um. Oh, there's a game I'm thinking of, but I can't. I can't. It doesn't come to the t to the, to my mind right now. Here we get we get somebody to try and play Octopath. Okay. This it's is a JRPG this is the plan. On the Switch and Steam and Game Pass. Oh, I see. I see. Interesting. Oh. All right. I'm sorry, Bean. Stream is super duper chill. I keep killing you, Bean. Oh, if you're new, well, you're new here, but I call my uh, avatar, I guess, on Hollow Knight, Bean. Uh, why? I don't remember why, but I just do. And anyway, I've stuck to it since then. Well, oh, that's adorable. I find Hollow Knight super adorable. Like, I don't know if I just have a bad sense of like... <laughs> but it's, I don't know, it's cute. Bean is cute. I love Bean. I also bonk him on the head way too many times. Oh gosh! Ah, run! Okay. <laughs> I uh, I get scared and frazzled a lot when I play this game. Uh, uh, <gasps> Whoa! All right, that's okay. Sure. Sure. Why? Could it not be? What's why? Okay. No. I gotta get out here for the night, but this stream is super chill and cool. I'll definitely be back. Yo, if you ever check out my stream, I'd love to have you there. You seem cool. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have a de Discord, definitely link it. I'm planning on making a Discord. I just, I'm procrastinating. Um, but yes, I will definitely check out your stream. It'd be super cool. Thank you so much for the raid again, and have a nice night. Uh... All right. Oh gosh. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. All right, and with that, guys. Lol, procrastination. And with that, guys, I will say good night.
we raided another streamer. We made them feel good, you know, and chat wasn't really popping, but we do that around here. All right. So you guys have a good night and I'll see you all on Sunday at 5 p.m. EST. Later, guys. <laughs>